Michael Chandler is getting a lot of heat for his fight against Dustin Poirier at UFC 281. The lightweight was looking to follow up his stunning KO win over Tony Ferguson with a win over number two contender Dustin Poirier. So why is Chandler defending himself against cheating allegations? And how did Poirier lead the UFC's unusual new partnership? Stay tuned for all that plus more MMA news is coming up. First up, how did Chandler lose to Poirier? Even though Michael Chandler didn't secure a win at UFC 281, he continued to build himself a fearsome reputation. He went back and forth with Dustin Poirier, losing the first round and winning the second. By the time he tapped out in the third round, his face was a bloody mess. And it's what we've come to expect from Chandler, who won the fight of the year for last year's brutal contest with Justin Gaethje. He was close to the title when he suffered a spectacular KO loss to Charles Oliveira at UFC 262. Chandler has been scrambling to make his way back up to the top of a stacked lightweight division, and time might be running out. The three-time Bellator lightweight champion is 36, and the bad news is, is that there's a new king in town, Islam Makachev. Chandler's contest with Poirier will go down as another one of his most entertaining fights, but entertainment doesn't win titles, and he is eating up a lot of damage in the process. When asked how much longer he can keep it up, Chandler said that he came to the UFC to fight the toughest guys in the world, and that's exactly what he's getting. Beyond that, Chandler said that he doesn't have any major health issues that make him want to hang up the gloves, but when the time comes, he will be happy to spend more time with his family rather than in training camps. Next up, Chandler wants the BMF title. Some fighters in MMA aren't obsessed with getting their hands on the championship, but one unofficial title is seen as a mark of respect. The BMF belt was on the line between Jorge Masvidal and Nate Diaz to settle who was the baddest mother effort in the sport. And now, Michael Chandler wants to throw his hat in the ring for the title. After the slugfest fights he has endured over the last couple of years, he thinks the BMF belt belongs to him. He said, if we did a poll right now, who's the baddest mother fudger in the UFC? Chandler has called out Conor McGregor to return to the division, but in the meantime, he thinks that the MMA world would love to see Michael Chandler versus Jorge Masvidal. As a top five lightweight though, beating Jorge Masvidal wouldn't do his career too much good. Masvidal is coming off three straight losses and is ranked number 11 in the welterweight division. Chandler has said that he is aiming to pick up titles like Knockout of the Year and Fight of the Year, so the BMF belt would go nicely in his trophy cabinet. That's an awful lot of confidence for someone who lost their last fight. So, what does the new champion think about Chandler's prospects? Michael Chandler's recent form isn't fooling anyone. Last month, after beating Charles Oliveira to win the lightweight championship, Islam Makachev said that he wasn't impressed. In his view, even if Chandler beat Poirier, it wouldn't be enough to earn him a title shot. Makachev pointed to Chandler's poor record and said he'd rather face a new challenge. And that's exactly what the UFC has organized for him. At UFC 284, Makachev will defend his first title against featherweight champion Alexander Volkanovsky. After totally dominating the featherweight division since 2020, Volkanovsky is looking for a bigger challenge. And before you assume that Makachev will bag an easy win, there are plenty of reasons to believe that Makachev could be quickly dethroned by Volkanovsky, who has never shied away from a fight. The Australian will be coming in as the underdog. Still, his teammate Israel Adesanya thinks people are wrong to count him out and that the crafty veteran might become a double UFC champion in Perth. For Michael Chandler and the rest of the top five lightweights, that would mean a new target to aim for. The division is the most competitive it's ever been, and born in a different time, any one of them could have been champion. Since Khabib Nurmagomedov retired though, it's been more a game of musical chairs than any one dominant fighter. Next, why does Chandler think he is being unfairly attacked in the media? And wait until you hear which bizarre new direction Poirier's career is heading in. So don't go anywhere. Chandler denies cheating. It may seem like there are barely any rules in the octagon, but some are largely unwritten. Hitting someone in the groin or eye poking can often be considered accidental, but fighters refrain from doing so out of respect. Michael Chandler had a huge challenge in front of him in the form of Dustin Poirier. Poirier's only losses in his previous 11 fights were against Charles Oliveira and Khabib Nurmagomedov. And at UFC 281, Poirier was far too strong for Chandler. That didn't mean Iron Mike was going down without a fight. He was willing to do anything to keep his championship hopes alive. And I mean anything. After the fight, Chandler admitted to fish hooking Poirier, but claimed that after he put a 
his hand into Poirier's mouth, his opponent wouldn't let it out. And Poirier confirmed that, saying he bit down on Chandler's fingers as hard as he could. But it wasn't the only incident that was fishy throughout the fight. Later, he was warned by referee Dan Mirigalata for striking the back of Poirier's head, which is illegal. Defending himself in a press conference, Chandler said, you all know I'm not a cheater. I love this game. I don't cheat. In the end, it wasn't enough anyways. Chandler was submitted with a rear naked choke by Poirier in the third round, guaranteeing that he won't be getting a title shot soon. But what's next for Poirier? Next, how Poirier secured a partnership with the UFC. The UFC is always looking for new brand partners. Normally though, they come through Dana White, not the fighters. With Dustin Poirier though, he has brought an offer to the table that the boss couldn't refuse. This year, Poirier came out with a surprising product. The lightweight contender announced the release of Poirier's Louisiana style hot sauce in 2020. Poirier is paying respect to the place he was born and raised, Lafayette, Louisiana. Since debuting the flavor, he has released two other versions as well. And it's not just Dustin who's excited about the company. The UFC partnered with the product to make it the official hot sauce of the UFC. What this means isn't clear. Will fighters eat hot wings after their contests? Either way, whatever the UFC does with it will be news for Poirier. Just as Conor McGregor did with the proper 12 whiskey in 2018, becoming an official sponsor of the UFC seems to be a no-brainer for former fighters with a good product. If you can't sell your stuff to your fans, it has no chance on the market. McGregor paved the way to turn MMA celebrity into serious money. He sold his stake in Proper 12 for a reported $600 million. Most of us would never consider fighting again with that kind of money in the bank. But then again, most of us aren't UFC fighters. That's why Poirier and McGregor could be fighting again. Dustin Poirier has fought Conor McGregor three times now. The first was during the height of McGregor's momentum, and the Notorious made light work of him, knocking him out in the first round. Seven years later, in 2021, Poirier was ready. He looked to be a much more complete fighter, and this time, he finished the fight with a TKO halfway through the second round. Their most recent bout was at UFC 264, which was a disappointing end for everyone. Connor brutally snapped his leg in the first round and has been recovering ever since. And when asked about the possibility of a fourth fight between the two, Poirier wouldn't rule it out. He said, you never know in this sport. Never say never. Poirier, like everyone else, isn't sure which division McGregor would come back in either. He has bulked up to well over 170 pounds, more than 15 pounds over the lightweight limit. Dustin said that he is more interested in getting the belt right now. But former fighter Chael Sonnen thinks that Dustin is chasing something bigger. Sonnen said that Poirier is trying to get to the point where winning or losing doesn't matter anymore. He said, I'm talking about a Conor McGregor status. Dustin wants to do super fights. And Sonnen thinks that whether or not Poirier ever becomes champion, he will still be remembered in the history books. Who do you think Michael Chandler and Dustin Poirier should face next? Does either of them deserve another title shot? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe today, and we'll see you again at the next one.